I installed some concealed hinges recently in my daughter's bedroom. Concealed hinges are a pretty impressive piece of engineering. Some hinges, like these Blum hinges here, come with soft close function, which is absolutely fantastic. But when I first installed these hinges, I had to do quite a lot of research on hole cutters, what sort of hinge, and where to position them on the wall. And I didn't find a lot of information out there readily available to tell you how to do that. So I've done the hard work. I know how to fit these things and I'm here to show you today everything you need to know to successfully fit your own concealed hinges. So I suppose the first question is why go with a concealed hinge like this when you can install one of these flush hinges? Um, I've installed quite a few of these hinges around the house. As you can see here they're called flush because they sit within the door reveal so you don't have to rebate the hinge into the door. And I've got to say they work pretty well. But the issue with these hinges is you've got to fix them in exactly the right place because you don't have any adjustment on them. Point one. Point two, there's no soft close function. So when you shut the door, you've got to install magnets like this. And the other point to make, which is an obvious one, is that flush hinges, you can actually see them, whereas concealed hinges are concealed. So what have we got in today's toolkit? Perhaps the first place to start is the hinge cutter itself. 35 millimeter hinge cutter or fours and a bits, depending on where you buy them from. This is just branded TCT hinge cutter. Obviously the hinges themselves. I've got my electric drill and an electric screwdriver, although a manual screwdriver would be absolutely fine. 3.5mm diameter wood screws. The actual length of the wood screw very much depends on the thickness of your door. Uh, in this video I've used 20mm long screws because my door is 25 millimeters thick. And then last two things we've got here are mock-up. Two bits of wood mirroring the actual doors that I'm going to be hanging. It's a really good idea to do a mock-up because that way you can try out your hinges and the methodology for putting them in before you start drilling in 35 millimeter holes into your door just to make sure you've got everything right. It gives you real confidence when you come to actually fit the proper door. And finally, I would have—I was quite tempted to do this video without using a jig because I think once you know how far in from the edge of the door you're drilling your hole, as long as you accurately mark it each time, I don't think you really need a jig. But I would have got a lot of criticism and comments probably on the review if I hadn't done a jig. And actually, I decided to do one in the end because if you've got a fair few of these things to drill, it does make your life a lot easier. Now, when you buy... Blum hinges, they don't tend to come with the mounting plates, which obviously you need as well, because the mounting plate goes in, in the cupboard and obviously the hinge goes in the door. So that's the mounting plate there. I bought zinc cast mounting plates, they're just a little bit better quality. I don't think you really need to. Clip on hinges I bought were £9.20 a pair. Mounting plates are £2.25 each. If you buy the steel mounting plates as opposed to the zinc cast mounting plates, you're looking at about £1.75 for those. A couple of other things we've got here, adjustable square and a braddle. Okay, the next part of the video concerns the crucial process of working out what hinges to buy and where to position them on the door and frame. So there are lots of concealed hinges on the market, but I decided after doing a little bit of research to go with Blum because they're one of the market leaders and I thought invest in a decent quality hinge then I'm not going to go wrong. It took me quite a lot of digging to find out, to find the technical information I needed for concealed cabinet hinges. I post a link at the end of this video to the website that I'm looking at now but basically it's pretty hidden. You, can, you have to go to the clip top blue motion page that I've got here and then you have to scroll down and you have to click on brochure and that brings up a downloads page. This is why I can't post the actual download link itself at the end of this video. And then you finally you have to click on brochure and that downloads the brochure and then finally you can open it. So there are lots of brochures on the Blum website which have hundreds and hundreds of pages deal with every single product they've got. But what I like about this one is it is specifically dealing with concealed hinges as it says, premium hinge systems for cabinet doors. 
Okay, so what I like about this PDF is immediately on page one, you've got a quick reference guide, which is like a key in a, in, in a way, because further down in the PDF, you bore into the detail of how to position the hinges, depending on the sort of hinges you've bought and the sort of door that you're trying to hang. So you've got a guide here that shows you for the, the hole that you've got to drill with your hinge cutter, it shows you how far away from the edge of the door you need to drill it. The other good thing about this page is it, there's a really good guide here that shows you how many hinges to position on your door. My door comes into this category here. Well, it's sort of between the three and the four hinges required, but I went for four because making my doors out of MDF, I want to support the doors as well as possible to prevent them from warping in the future, and four hinges is a really good way to do that. It does make the doors a little bit harder to hang because you've got to line up and click in four hinges, but I think it's well worth overcompensating rather than putting too few hinges on your door. Okay, scrolling to page eight, it then explains how the side and depth adjustments work on these concealed hinges. This is what's so fantastic about these hinges. They come set from the factory in the neutral position and then provided you have fixed your hinges and base plates in the right position on the door, you then have the ability to adjust your doors to quite a great degree. So you've got, as I will demonstrate in this video, side adjustment using this screw, and then you've got a depth adjustment using this screw here at the back of the hinge. But then, even better than that, depending on which mounting plate you go for, the mounting plates also have adjustment on them, giving you the ability to move your door up and down in the frame. There are lots of different hinges that are available from the typical screw-in hinges that I'll be demonstrating today to these inserter hinges where you don't need any screws. Okay, page 11 then has a really helpful guide to basic, which basically explains to you how you use the brochure. Um, sounds a bit obvious, but it is worth looking at this because believe you me, it took me a while to figure it out. I'll show you in a minute on the specific hinges that I'm going to be installing today, but you set your boring distance which is the the edge of your 35 millimeter hole to the edge of the door that distance by deciding how much of a gap which they call the reveal you want between the door and the frame so the only other thing to talk about at this stage is you have got to decide how wide you want your doors to open and whether you want your doors to be inset like these or whether you want them to be overlay like these. This is really important because you'll see here the inset doors the, the hinge has a has a bent sort of crank on it whereas the overlay i.e. the door sits on the outside of the frame rather than inset into it the overlay hinges have a much straighter crank so it's really important you buy the right hinge because I'm putting my doors in quite cramped space, I only want them to open 95 degrees. And also, because my doors are, are 25 millimeters thick wide, because I've used two pieces of 12 millimeter MDF glued together, I need to go for the thick door application, which takes us to this page. You see here it says clip top, blue motion, 95 degree thick door. So I'm looking at the inset application because my door frame is going to be inset. And zooming down to the relevant section, this deals with where you mount your base plate on the door frame. It says T plus 38.5. T is the thickness of the door. My door is 25 millimeters thick. And so I need to say 25 millimeters plus 38.5, which gives you a total distance from the edge of the door to drilling the first screw hole for the base plate of 635 millimeters or 6.35 centimeters. So that's probably the easy bit. Now in terms of the actual hinge itself and where to install, where to drill your 35 millimeter hinge cutting hole, again this is reasonably straightforward when you know how. H there are two different base plate heights. For a typical application like mine, the H, H is zero, you see up here. So basically the hinge isn't set in from the edge of the door. 
the base plate is, sits snugly on the door frame, so that's why H is zero. So where H is zero, you look at, these are the reveal dimensions, and by reveal dimensions we're talking about this little gap here. The gap you have between the frame and the door itself. Right, this gap is actually really important. You see on the internet lots of information about some people might go for a one, one and a half millimetre gap. When I first started doing my research on this, I thought you want to have the gap as small as possible. But actually, you need a reasonable size gap because when the door opens, if you're not careful, this point here on the door will clash with this point here on the frame. So, zooming in on these doors here that I have installed and will be featuring in the video, you see a nice healthy gap there of two millimetres. But when you open the door, you see that gap immediately closes to almost nothing in the first few degrees of the opening and then it obviously widens again as the door opens further. So if your gap is much less than two millimetres you're going to run into problems there. Generally it tends to happen at the top of the door away from where the hinges are but it's just a point to make. So I decided upon a two millimetre reveal gap i.e. the gap between the door and the frame and you want to think of this as the sort of neutral setting position because don't forget once you've got your hinge and your base plate in place the great thing about these hinges is you can adjust them so you can make the gap wider or you can make the gap narrower so a two millimeter reveal requires a boring distance of five millimeters that is the gap between the outside edge of your 35 millimeter hole and the outside of the door frame. Going back to the quick reference guide on page 2 of the PDF, the boring distance of 5 tells you that the dimension C, which is the all-important dimension you need because this is where you start drilling your hole, boring distance of 5 is 22.5 millimetres. So from the edge of the door to where you start drilling the hole is 22.5 millimetres. Okay, now I'm going to quickly run through how I made the jig. So I took an old piece of wood that I had lying around, 10 by 15 centimetres square. Um, this is actually pine, but I guess it could be MDF. I went for something a little bit harder. So I've drilled my 35 millimetre hole with my hinge cutter. I've now marked a line to make absolutely sure that we've got a 5 millimetre boring distance between the edge of the piece of wood that I'm using for my jig and the hole. Now I'm going to put a couple of screws in to fix it into place. That's it, the jig's now ready and I can put that against my door to now drill each hole in exactly the right place. Right, my first thoughts when I was tackling these concealed hinges was I've got to do a mock-up just to check that all my measurements are correct and that the hinges I've bought work as I was hoping they would. So that's what I'm going to do now. So here's my mock-up. First off, I've got to mark the position of the base plate. So I need to set my adjustable square for 63.5 millimetres. I'm going to draw a line right the way across a piece of wood, 63.5 millimetres in, because I'm going to be putting two hinges on this mock-up. So I'm marking a point on both sides so that the hinges are equally spaced out. I mark the centre point on the jig, centre point of the hinge cutter itself, so I can easily line that up with the line that I've made on the door. Now the jig's in place, I can start the hole. Okay, I've started enough of the hole now to take the jig away, and I can keep drilling. So the jig's done its job. Distance is exactly five millimetres from the edge, that's the boring distance. I'm not using a drill press for this. Um, the benefit of drill presses is it ensures that the drill is vertical when you're drilling. If I was doing hundreds of these I'd probably invest in one but it's not really worth it when I'm just doing one covered like this. I'm going to stop drilling 
when the drill bit is just flush with the uh, surface of the cupboard door. There we go. Test the hinge to make sure it fits. Still a little bit proud, so I need to go a little bit deeper. Okay, that's perfect. Now I can just check it square and get my bradle to accurately mark the centre of each hole and insert a couple of screws. Okay, I'm now going to repeat the process on the second hole. I've actually got my drill bit on the slowest setting for this because the drill bit works better, at, amazingly the drill bit works better at slow speeds. Now what remains to be done is to insert the base plates. And I'm going to do that by, by putting the door in place where I want it and then just marking the position of the screws. Okay, the base plates are now in position and now I can just click on the hinges themselves. So, the moment of truth. Let's see how the door shuts. Soft close, so you see it closing very gradually. So, I now know that it opens beautifully without clashing with the side, which I kind of hoped it would do, but if I put it to 90 degrees, the gap I've got at the side is slightly too big and also the door is sticking out a little bit past the edge of the frame. But that does not matter because the beauty of these hinges is the abil your ability to adjust them. Turn this screw here to bring the hinge backwards. So I'm going to insert my screwdriver in there. You can see it moving now, isn't that brilliant? I can move it to exactly where I want it. Because these screws are set in the neutral position when you get the hinges, in other words, you can adjust it that way and that way. And because I position the base plate, the standard distance from the edge of the frame is brilliant because it enables me to either adjust it left or right to get the door to shut in exactly the position I want it to. Now, the next thing I need to adjust is this gap here. So again, this screw here is the screw that you use to adjust the vertical position of the hinge on the base plate. Now going up, and I'm now adjusting it down. So the third way you can adjust these hinges, which is equally as useful, is if you loosen these screws on the base plate, You can raise the door up or down, which I have to say is really useful because typically when you're hanging your full-size doors, you tend to hang the door a little bit low. So the ability just to raise it up a bit is fantastic. So that is the beauty of doing a mock-up door before you start actually drilling into your finished doors. So this video is already nearly 19 minutes long and if you sat through this much you're doing pretty well. So I'm not going to show you every single step that I then went through to install the hinges on the two doors themselves. I'm showing you a few visuals here of the process that I went through. So what we are going to do now is fast forward to the final part of the process which is hanging the new doors i.e. clicking the hinges into the base plates. Now, particularly when you've got four hinges on a door or even more, it does, there, is a, there is a little bit of a knack to this. You want to make sure, obviously, that your hinges and the base plates are properly lined up. Bit of an obvious point. You want the hinges in their open position like this. And then you want to simply line up all four hinges. So all four hinges are now 
in position, lined up, and then it's simply a case of exerting a bit of pressure on the door, pushing it into the cupboard almost. So what's happened there is all four hinges have clicked into place when I push the door towards the frame. So that's it, the doors are all hung. I made a few minor adjustments. I did adjust the screws in the base plate to bring the, drawers up, the doors up a little bit because I hung them a fraction, a millimetre or two too low. And I did bring the hinges out a little bit to make sure that we had enough of a gap here to stop the doors clashing. So that's it. It's a bit of a marathon this video today but I wanted to show you everything that you could possibly want to know like I went through when I first hung concealed hinges. So I really hope you found today's video useful. As usual if you've got any comments or questions leave them below the video and if you're new to my channel I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.